Howdy, everyone. This is Jason Thrips, and I want to talk to you about flipping CDs. Now, you have seen me talk about it. You know that I've had uh, my flip first flipping CDs about a year ago. I'm getting ready to do number two. But I want to share with you the successes that I and others have had uh, from flipping CDs online. Now, how am I the expert? Well, a couple things. Uh, I worked in a, a multitude of different record stores around the country, and I've been a music nerd since I was a little kid. And I started selling CDs online on, in March of 2000. It is March of 2020. That means this is my 20th anniversary of selling CDs online. And over the last 20 years, I've sold a few hundred thousand CDs. So, you know, with, uh, with repetition comes expertise. And I am the man to share my expertise with you because I fully realized there are more CDs than I could ever purchase, and there are more customers that I could ever satisfy. So I might as well teach everyone else how to do it, because what's great is no matter if you live in New York City or Orlando or a small corner of North Dakota, there are CDs to be found everywhere. Thrift stores, record stores, garage sales, flea markets, antique stores. And yes, there are still record stores for some of the for those of you who don't know that. Uh, but today, I wanted to share with you some successes that others have had, who have taken my first flipping CDs webinar. And in case you don't know what it is, I taught a class. Let me. Where's my little graphic? Mm, there's my little graph. Nope, wrong graphic. Uh, no, nope, that's for number two. <laughs> All right, so I taught a class on what, uh, how to flip CDs uh, about a year ago. It was called Flipping CDs. And now that we're having a second one, I guess that was Flipping CDs number one. Uh, the top five reasons why selling CDs is more awesome than anything else. They're everywhere. They're easy to ship. They're easy to list. I taught how you can quickly get through the shelves at the thrift store. I, I showed you what apps you need on your phone to get selling. Uh, how to tackle the store. There's you know certain sections you should hit. How to get free inventory, and then how to rescratch uh, used CDs. And then even more so, I went into uh, long boxes, uh, the just in bin, soundtracks, Disney, the lounge section, the comedy section, and the children's section. Hard to find CDs. Um, where good stuff is hidden around the record store. Uh, rare rap and hip hop, uh, what you need to know about artists' first release, promo CD singles, CDs that audiophiles will spend big money for, Christmas CDs, and much, much more. That was webinar number one. That was about two and a half hours long, and I'm just readying webinar number two. So I'll tell you about what's coming up in that in a second. But let me show you some of the successes that uh, others have had. So when you take uh, either my first or second or both, uh, flipping CDs, we, uh, I have a special group just for you. It's called Welcome to Flippin' CDs Training. And then in that group, everyone, we talk about uh, what's hot and who's selling what. So let's just start scrolling through and take a look at uh, what people have found and sold. And, and almost always, they list the price they paid and then the price they sold it for. So I recently just shared that I had picked up this uh, Back in Black cassette by ACDC new uh, at a record store for 13 bucks in Cleveland. And after being listed for only four days, it sold for $50. Now you're saying, wait, Jay, how come you're talking about uh, cassettes? Well, one of the other courses I taught was, whoops, there we go, flipping cassettes. So at first I taught flipping CDs and then I taught flipping cassettes. So if you have not taken my other courses, you can get a whole big old package deal for all of them. So you're, you're gonna end up with like 10 hours of instructional content that is actionable. You can actually take all this content and go turn it into actual money. Now I'm gonna show you the people who have taken uh, part one and the flipping cassette webinar and how they have done with it. So there it is, I turned $13 into $50 in about four days. Uh, Dave Adams found this uh, Mana uh, soundtrack to the Polynesian Cultural Center show for a dollar 59 and he sold for 35 bucks. Now, this is not some big artist that you know. This is a tourist attraction on the north shore of uh Oahu. And uh, this was a soundtrack from their production from years ago. They don't even do this show anymore. So it's there's all these little like little niches, little little corners of the, the music world that most people don't know, and these are the kind of things that I teach. Uh Joel also sold a cassette Stomp and Tom paid 99 cents and sold them for 40 bucks. 
I have no idea who Stompin' Tom is. But that's kind of the part of the joy of uh, flipping CDs and flipping cassettes. You find all this weird stuff you never knew about. You never would have paid attention to had you not taken my courses. And now you're like, okay, my eyes are open to different stuff. And, oh, geez, Joel just turned 99 cents into 40 bucks for a cassette in the year. Well, this was sold on the um, – actually, my birthday, 2019, but uh, the second to last day of the year. So isn't that crazy? All right, EJ here paid 25.6, sold this. Uh, Big problem rockers. Uh, it was autographed too, so that's cool. And it was headed to Belgium. That's the other great thing about selling music. Music is the international language. Some people say love is. I say hogwash. It's music. Because people in Belgium and people in Poughkeepsie and people in Japan and people in Russia and people in Los Angeles will all like the same music. So it doesn't matter that it's in English or not, uh, but you can sell it to customers in all those locations. So you turn 25 cents into $22.00. 49 cents. <clears throat> we did talk about Judy found a broken uh, CD that would be worth a lot of money had it not been broken. Want to know if there was any <clears throat> if there's any money in selling it. Uh, and of course, mentioning that it is broken, but yeah, there's not really. All right, my buddy Andy found this Journey CD for $5 at an antique mall. There's a place you probably didn't think that you should be sourcing CDs at antique malls. Uh, but he sold it for $55, and this was a used CD. It was not new. Uh, Joel paid $5 Canadian for this Todd Rundgren CD. I didn't even realize that this top, this specific Todd Rundgren, Rundgren CD was uh, out of print and hard to find, but he got $47.49 for it uh, U.S., so that's pretty bitching. Uh, fun side note, Todd Rundgren owns a tiki bar. If you know me, you know I love tiki's. All right, so Andy, back on January 5th, said this has maybe have been my best sale days ever. About $330 in CD sales, and he spent $55. Bucks. We turned $55 into $330. He sold The Grateful Dead for $75. Uh, Ella Fitzgerald and Louis Armstrong for $70. Uh, whatever that is, St. Sains Carnival to Animals for ooh, $8. Music from the Motion Picture Songcatcher for $20. I'm not sure which MTV Unplugged that was, but $100. I think it's Pearl Jam. Uh, uh, Healing Mind System. It's like kind of a how-to, 28 bucks, And Magdalena for $13. That's all within 24 hours. So as you can see, <clears throat> flipping CDs can bring you a lot of money. All right, so this was this is something I, I, uh, I posted back in January. Uh, it was like the movie Batman v Superman came to life because in the same weekend, I sold a Batman sound uh, CD and a Superman CD. I paid $7, excuse me, I paid $3 for the Batman, sold it for $25 bucks and $7 for the Superman and sold it for $50. Bucks. Purchased both at a record store. Now you might think, geez, don't record stores know what they're doing to an extent, but I know even more and even better. And that is what I teach. All right, Dave here found the Bronx Wanderers. I don't know who the Bronx Wanderers are. He paid $1.59 and sold it for 50 bucks. Holy cow. Uh, Patrick said, love waking up to ching ch ch ching notifications, paid $5, had it listed for 50 took a little off less offer uh, on Rockus. I don't know Rockus. <laughs> but then again, I and I know a lot. Like people try and stump me on music, and I, I rarely get stumped, but I I I daily find music I've never heard of that you just don't even understand how much is released. But the great thing is it's the stuff you never heard of that tends to be the bigger price stuff because they didn't sell well because no one ever heard of them. But those 10, 15, 20, 100 fans that are still out there will want it. So uh, Patrick paid five bucks and sold this Rockets for $45. Uh, Australian. Patrick's in Australia. And that's a good point. This works anywhere there's music. So Europe. Uh, I get this asked all the time. Will this work in England? Oh, absolutely. Japan, Australia, because you'll have music local to you if you live in those countries that other parts of the world want. You'll have some of the same stuff and you'll have different stuff. So uh, it'll definitely work wherever you can find music. Jim uh, only sold this for 15 bucks, but it was a cassette he paid a quarter for. The Beatles on cassette. So, look, $15 isn't a huge sale, but when you pay a quarter for an item and you sell it for $15, if you can do that over and over and over all day long, you've got this nailed. 
All right, what else? Uh, Dave Adams paid uh, 25 bucks for this box set and sold it for $95.83. And box sets, one of the first things I'm going to be teaching in flipping CDs number two. There's a lot of money to be made in box sets, but there's, there's also a lot to skip. And that's the one thing when I teach, I teach you what to look for and how to find it. But I also teach you what to skip because there are things that you'll see all the time that your eye will be like, oh, that must be good and is not good. So I'll happily teach you what to skip also. All right, so this one's a crazy story. Uh, so Dave Adams bought this Garth Brooks CD for $1.59, <clears throat> excuse me, and sold it for $44.73. This was way back about 25 years ago, maybe, when uh, Garth Brooks had this alter ego he created called Chris Gaines, and Garth Brooks wanted to do a rock record. And it came out, and it was terrible, and it tanked. Now, nowadays, I think it would, would, would work, but back then, it didn't work. And there was a moment when I was working in CD stores and record stores around the country that this was in every single budget bin and there'd be like 20 of them. You could pick it up at any record store for a quarter or 50 cents or a dollar or whatever their budget bin prices were. Now, cut to 25 years later, 2020, it's a sought after CD because Garth is back. You know, Garth retired for a long time and he's back in full force. And so people are looking for all his stuff. Now, most of his stuff is easily accessible. This one isn't because it was such a clunker that it just went out of print. And so nowadays people want it and will pay big money for it. Man, I wish I would have sucked up every one of them out of the budget bin. Now, here's a crazy story. Just talk about a weird coincidence. My cousin was in the record business forever. He worked for Warner Brothers Records way back in the day. He's the one that signed Van Halen to their first contract. And there was a point where after working in rock and roll for like 20, 25 years, he wanted to switch up things and went to Nashville, started working in country music. And this was his baby. He said, Garth, we should do this rock record. It'll be awesome. I'm a rock guy. And this came out and tanked so bad that it kind of cost my cousin his career. Now, he was at the tail end of his career. But yeah, this was kind of like the, yeah, you're done. You don't know what to do anymore. So weird that this became a big uh, CD to flip and one I, I often teach and look for, but also uh, affected part of my family. So very bizarre. Uh, Steven said, my best CD sale. Now, he didn't say um, how much he paid for it, uh, but it's Samuel Adler, The Study Orchestration. It's a five-CD set, some kind of orchestra thing that I, I have never heard of, but sold for $107. And I got to imagine maybe he paid eight bucks at most. Here's one I posted on January 19th. The date is very important because it was a Christmas CD. So two and a half weeks after Christmas, someone said, you know what I need? I need a Hootie and the Blowfish Christmas CD right now. At not a huge sale, 15 bucks. I only paid a couple dollars for it. And, you know, Hootie's been out of the spotlight forever now. And someone needed it in January. You never know. So you've got to list Christmas stuff all the time. That's one of the things I love teaching. All right. Joseph bought uh, this Kid Rock CD at Goodwill for $2.52 and sold it for $29. And, and the reason it sold for so much was back in the day when we had Best Buys on every corner and Targets on every corner and Walmarts and stuff, uh, and, and CDs were a big deal. When they would release CDs, they would release different versions in different uh, at different places. And so if you want this version from Best Buy, it comes with different tracks than the Walmart version, and it comes with different tracks in the Target version. So well done, Joseph. Uh, how about for free? Andy got this CD for free and he sold it for $140. So he was at an estate sale when it ended. He was buying some stuff and they're like, ah, just we'll throw the CD in. So yeah, that's pretty sweet when you can get something for zero and turn it into $140. That's a Glenn Campbell uh, CD. <clears throat> yes, I said Glenn Campbell. All right, Jason with a Y. Bought this CD, uh, Scott Paulson and Jim Crenn hanging out in that uh, from 102.5 WDVE. Paid 75 cents for it and sold for $37.15. That's pretty amazing. <clears throat> Here's another one of my posts. This was a soundtrack to the movie uh, The Fury. I bought it at a record store for $8 and sold it on Amazon for $48. Now, CDs are selling on both Amazon and B eBay and also Macari and other places too. Uh, Amazon and eBay being the big two. Now, not everyone can sell on Amazon. Uh, if your grandfather did, great. If you're not, no biggie. Plenty of CD sales on eBay also. 
Uh, one of the things I teach about is Taylor Swift in the first uh, flipping CDs. Uh, Darren here paid six bucks for these three, lot of them together, and sold them for $52. Uh, Rose turned 99 cents into 20 bucks. Yippee skippy for Mac, Max Roach. Uh, Jethro Tull, who doesn't like a little rock flute? Ed here turned 99 cents into $60. Now, when you're seeing the people spend 99 cents or a quarter, they're fine. Those at thrift stores and, and garage sales. Those of us who spent like, you know, five, eight, 13 bucks, we're finding those at record stores. Good, good CDs are found everywhere. And that's what I teach. All right. EJ paid 99 cents for this two bad mice, chaotic chemistry. And the CD came without any cover. So it's a, it's a weird one. I, I don't know it, but he sold it for $27. Came out in 1995. Uh, Joseph spent two bucks at Goodwill for this Pokemon soundtrack, sold for $65. That's another thing I teach, anime soundtracks. And you might even say, what's anime? It's a very specific style of animation that comes out of Japan. And a huge following around the world. And they also, the people who like the animation also like the music from it. Uh, Joseph paid two bucks for this Killer Mike CD uh, that happened to be autographed and sold for 50 bucks. Uh, Killer Mike is a rapper. He also has his own TV show, and he's also part of a duo called Run the Jewels with a DJ named LP, and uh, I absolutely love Run the Jewels. Uh, so Killer Mike is uh, somebody you should definitely keep an eye out for. Uh, Cassingles. Man, if you're old enough to remember cassettes, when the singles came out, they came out on what was called Cassingles, and they were cassettes with one or two tracks on it that slid in the little thin cardboard sleeve. So Rose found this Cassingle for a quarter, and sell it for 10 bucks. Now that's not, you know, you're not going to get rich off of $10 sales, but the profit margin from a quarter to 10 bucks is awesome. Uh, Darren found blank jewel cases at his Goodwill for uh, 14 cents a piece. That's a pretty good return, a pretty good rate for uh, blank jewel cases. And you need fresh ones to sell CDs because that's a great thing about selling CDs. You buy a CD that's got cracks and it's got price stickers on it, man. All you do is pop out the cover. Take out the whoop, take out the CD, pop out the back, take out the back cover, put it in a fresh case. It looks brand new. You can't do that with a book. You can't do that with a pair of jeans, but you sure can do it with a CD and a cassette. Uh, Andy found this Lyle May CD for one dollar, sold it for ninety dollars. Dave paid a buck fifty nine for the Ventures. Oh my god, I love the Ventures. Ventures have put out a lot of music, have a lot of out of print CDs. Sold this one for thirty nine ninety nine. Dave paid a uh, buck for uh, East of the Sun, West of the Moon. I think it was uh, like a musical. It paid a dollar for it, sold it for 50 bucks. <clears throat> I have sold six music media items this month, totaling $115 with an investment of about three bucks. Okay, so she took my class and she then spent $3 and turned it into 115 So my class was paid for. Her initial investment was paid for, and she's made a ton of profit, but the selling doesn't stop. It just keeps going and going and going. So that's awesome, Rose. Good job. Darren sold his Beethoven 12 CD box set, uh, paid $260 at Goodwill, sold for $80. Bucks. Again, I'm teaching box sets this go around. Here's one of my posts. Who doesn't love the music of Steven Seagal movies? Did you even know that there was such a demand for music from Steven Seagal movies? They made a whole CD about it. Uh, paid four bucks, sold it for $25. And I've sold that CD about six times. It's one of my favorite ones to sell. Uh, this one blew my mind. Tap dancing for beginners on CD with instructions. For And he sold for $50 and he paid a buck. Oh my God. <clears throat> now, this is not a huge sale, but I wanted to highlight this one. Uh, two Christopher Cross cassettes for eight bucks did pay only a dime each, so 20 cents invested. I would not normally pick up Christopher Cross cassettes because there's not a whole heck of a lot of money. But you know what? If you bought a whole collection and they end up being a dime a piece when you worked them out and you could start selling these two for eight and these three for 10 and these two for 15, yeah, that adds up really, really quick. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, Andy sold this Christmas CD on February 19th. Uh, didn't say what he paid, but it sold for $40. Again, two months after Christmas. EJ found non-music stuff, because you do find non-music stuff mixed in with the CDs at the Salvation Army. Paid a dollar, and uh, it was a kettlebell 
system, uh, kettlebell workout system, five DVD set they sold for 25 bucks. Well done. Uh, another Christmas sells all year round. Joseph sold this Jethro Tall Christmas CD for 25 bucks on February 25th, exactly two months after Christmas. That's crazy. Uh, EJ sold this whole Japanese import for 25, uh, he paid 25 cents, sold it for 20 bucks. Uh, we talked imports on the first uh, webinar, Flipping CDs, and we're talking some more imports on number two also. Uh, EJ paid 99 cents for this Iomi CD. Now, you might not know the name Iomi, but Tony Iomi is a guitar player from Black Sabbath, and he uh, he is what gave Black Sabbath its very unique guitar sound because he's missing parts of his fingers. So they, he had to down-tune his guitar, and this was his solo CD. He had a lot of guests on it, including Dave Grohl from uh, Foo Fighters and Nirvana, and their song Lament is uh, a goodbye. Lament is amazing. One of my all time favorite hard rock songs. Didn't even, I didn't know this one was out of print. I had this on my shelf. I'll definitely gonna start looking for it. Uh, what he what he paid for it? Paid ninety nine cents. Sold it for twenty five dollars. Darren bought this uh, uh, seven CD DVD box set uh, at Goodwill for three bucks. Sold it on Discogs for one hundred eight dollars. You might be saying, "Hey, what the hell is Discogs?" Well. It's another site to do some selling on. I'm going to be on, and that's another thing I'm going to be teaching in flipping CDs number two. Uh, and then we also talk other media things from time to time. Apparently, Joey, the TV show with Matt LeBlanc after Friends ended, the second season box set sells for hundreds of dollars. That's something I did not know, but man, I'm on the hunt for it now. Uh, here's one of my posts. This is my all-time favorite CD sale of the year so far. It'll probably be of the entire year by the end of the year. I sold, uh, the band is My Bloody Valentine. The album is called This Is Your Bloody Valentine, and it's sold on February 15th, the day after Valentine's Day. So I'm guessing someone had a really crappy Valentine's Day. So I'm sorry for whoever that was, but I did pay four bucks and sold it for $48. Uh, Matthew paid 50 cents for this classical CD, sold it for 40 bucks. Thanks again, Jason, the rest of the group. Woohoo! Show tunes for the win. Linda paid a buck seven, and this Pirates of Penzance sold for thirty dollars on eBay for her. Uh, uh, Chris found the police box set message in a box. He paid ten seventy, sold it on Amazon for sixty bucks. Man, I love flipping some box sets. And he bought a huge lot of CDs. Ended up paying thirty cents a piece when he counted them up. Sold this Lester Young for forty dollars. Also from the 30 cent lot, this Mark Knopfler and Emmy Lou Harris CD. Uh, again, spent 30 cents, sold it for $65. Uh, Susan sold, bought this for 38 cents, so took a best offer of almost 20 bucks and going to Canada. And she doesn't even understand what it is. It doesn't matter. Like you can find CDs that you have no clue what it is, but based on what I've taught you, you're like, ah, that's something good. So it does help a little bit to understand what you're selling, but man. You don't have to really know the music to sell it. Like I don't, li I don't listen to everything I sell, and some stuff I, I I can't stand. But I know it makes me money, so I'm happy to take that money. Uh, Dave paid a, a buck fifty nine for this Rocky Horror Picture Show karaoke CD. Meaning, if you had a karaoke party at your house, you'd put it on. The lyrics would come up. He sold for fifty dollars. So there's an art thing that's just like not in your normal wheelhouse. So that is the, uh, the the Facebook group that I have. That's a little bit of just showing every all the successes. People who took flipping CDs number one have made, and and those who applied. You got to apply what you learn. Have made thousands and thousands of dollars. And I'm back with flipping CDs number two. It's coming March 10th, a little over a week. Uh, if you could tune in live, that is great because you could ask questions. I'll answer any questions. But if you can't, just get signed up. You'll get the link to watch whenever you can and go to www.flippincds.com. You, you'll see it right down here and get signed up. <clears throat> now, the webinar is only 20 bucks. You find one CD for $40. You've already covered the cost of the webinar, the cost of your product, and put about $10 profit into your pocket. That's one CD. Of course, you're going to find more because they're everywhere. But if you haven't taken my other courses, I've wrapped them all into a nice, neat package with a bow for you. And you can get the whole Flippin' Media Full Monty bundle for a total of $99. Now, if you don't have $99 right now, we will allow you to split it into some easy payments. So here's what you get, all right? 
you get the original flipping CDs class. And we already talked about what that covers. You get the flipping Prince uh, bonus class that a lot of people have not seen yet. Uh, Prince was is so uh, there's so much to talk about Prince and CDs. I couldn't even do it justice by putting in a small segment in the flipping CDs class. So it is it it is its own web class. So the original flipping CDs is about two and a half hours. Flipping Prince is a little over an hour. Then after flipping CDs came out, I came back with flipping cassettes. Cassettes are so hot. I know this is probably shocking to some of you, but cassettes are crazy hot. And so I did a whole class on that. That's about two hours long. Flipping Christmas music. Uh, Christmas music is one of my specialties, and I love teaching it. So this go breaks down Christmas music very, uh, very deep breakdown of Christmas music. And from flipping CDs number one, we also uh, produced a professional. A notebook of all the notes so you can take them with you and then also a flipping anime class so flipping the soundtracks to the anime stuff so you get all of that all of that for 99 dollars. so 79 dollars for all of this and 20 dollars for flipping cds number two uh now I, I got it marked as a 415 dollar value but it's it's a thousand dollar value i mean like I said, the people who have taken just part one have made thousands of dollars. Then they threw the cassettes on. They made even more. And now you're going to get access to the Christmas, the anime, and the prints. Puh. You're off and running. It is super duper easy, easy to make money. So I want everyone to make that money. So head over to FlippinCDs.com. Get signed up today and be ready to learn. Now, look, if you've seen number one, number two is totally, totally different. And here are some of the things that we're going to be covering uh, in number two. Where my notes go? There are my notes. Uh, like I said, box sets for sure. Three-inch CDs. Most of you will be like, what the heck's a three-inch CD? You'll learn. Uh, we talked about promo CD singles in the first one. We're talking about regular CD singles, the second one. We're talking about autograph CDs. I am going to touch on prints a little bit in that webinar. Um, we're going to talk about hype stickers. I'm going to teach you how better to research to know what you have and how better to list to make more money. How to go to the record store. Like, here's a prime example. I went to my record store the other day and <clears throat> the bill before I checked out was a hundred and ninety dollars I think it was and then after some discounts and some other things it was down to 143 dollars so I saved like fifty dollars I'm gonna teach you how to save fifty dollars when you're at the record store uh and what else am I teaching uh yeah, mini LPs. Most don't know what mini LPs. We're going to teach mini LPs too. So look, get signed up. Uh, thank you for taking your time to watch this. Look, every, and everything I just showed was good bolo. So you know, keep your eyes peeled for all those CDs and cassettes because obviously they're worth a lot of money. But get signed up at FlippinCDs.com and uh, be ready to tune in March 10th. You don't have to see number one to uh, get, uh, get the use of number two. They are nice bookends to each other. If you have seen number one, number two is all new content, no repeat. So uh, be ready. I love sharing everything I know and I want to see everyone be successful. And I love when you share your successes in the Flippin' CDs uh, private Facebook group. So thanks for your time. And I'll see you on the 10th where we start talking Flippin' CDs number two, the return. Peace out. I'm gone.